What's going on? I'm your host, Jesse Vega. I'm excited to be here with you guys. Woo! Can you believe it? It's season six of Vega 411. I cannot believe it. But before I even begin to talk about any topics necessary, I just got to say that I'm hype. I cannot believe, like, this is a studio. Like, I started off with a home base, Four Corners, and now I revved it up and upgraded to a home base studio. Now, it's funny how you're thinking, like, how did it happen, Mr. Vega? How did you decide to go from your home and doing all your episodes to a studio? Well, long story short, what happened was, I got a call, I was working with the MNN, and if you realize, if you know that, I was performing on the show. And what happened was, I started promoting all my, my single, I'm gonna show you, which is available on Google Play and iTunes and Spotify. And I started working with one of my friends, his name is Paul Williams. Shout out to Paul. We actually worked on a film called Silentious, and he was working on the MNN set, and he says, you have a show? Why don't we work together? And we started brainstorming, and one thing led to another, and we had Vega for one on the set, so I'm excited. So today, we have a great show today. So we're gonna kick it off with my top five picks. Now, what I mean by top five picks, I mean my top five picks in movies, music, television, artists, all that good stuff. So there's a lot of great things that's happening in 2017, especially in movies. I love movies. I love it so much that even Disney classics. Now, you may be familiar with the Disney classics that's been getting a remake for the past two to three years. Um, they have been doing a lot of Disney classic remakes from such as Maleficent. Yeah, but except that Maleficent was the perspective of Maleficent, so it wasn't really from Sleeping Beauty. Cinderella and the Jungle Book. Now, previously on my last episode of Vega 41 season five, we discussed that Disney is gearing for another live action classic called Beauty and the Beast. I know, hold your breath. I know, it's exciting, right? Beauty and the Beast, isn't it crazy? The Beast and Belle and that whole lovey-dovey stuff about true love's kiss. Well, Beauty and the Beast has been a fairy tale classic based on the book by Gabrielle Suzanne Barbat. Now, you didn't know that, right? It was actually written by her. And it was published in 1740. Now, the story carried through generations of its time. I mean, they have so many different versions of Beauty and the Beast, and it's been told through so many years on and on and on and on. But it wasn't until Disney got hold of creating it into an animated classic tale in when? 1991. The film garnered it to bank in $145 million and became the third, yes, third most successful film of its time. That's because um, my favorite is Little Mermaid. That's why at that time it was number one. And then Toy Story. But we ain't getting into all of that. But after all the live action movies, Beauty and the Beast will be coming to life on March 17, 2017. Cast is superb. They started the, uh, the production for a while, maybe about a year and a half. And if you're wondering about who's playing Belle, her name is Emma Watson. That's right, Emma Watson. You probably know her as Hermione Granger in the Harry Potter chronological series. And now she got away from the Harry Potter stuff, and now she's doing her own stuff, and she's playing Belle. Now, Beast is played by Dan Stevens, who is well known to be in that series. I believe it's Downtown Abbey. I'm not too familiar with Downtown Abbey. I don't watch that show, but he's actually going to play the Beast. As well as Luke Evans, who's Gaston. I will go on through all the cast, but there's so many great, amazing actors. But those are the main actors that you got to really focus on who's playing the Beast, Bell, and all that. But yeah, he's well known to be in the Fast and the Furious. Um, and um, he's been doing a lot of movies for such a long time, so he's going to be playing the villain Gaston. Bill Condon is known for directing Chicago, so he's going to be directing. And if you know, Bill Condon won an Academy Award for Chicago, and he's also directed some episodes on the Twilight series. So Beauty and the Beast is going to be amazing. I don't know if you have seen the trailer, but don't fret, because we got a trailer for you guys. Watch right here. Hello, pleased to meet you. The master's not as terrible as he appears. I say we kill the beast! Think of the one thing you've always wanted. Now find it in your mind's eye and feel it in your heart.
wow, that was an amazing trailer. I cannot wait. Did you see how they did, like, the side-by-side -side of the original movie to, like, the classic and how it was intertwined with, it, 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 it's intertwined with each other? It's so crazy. So I cannot wait to see Beauty and the Beast and how they, like, use the Disney classic and put it in live action. I've been waiting for this such a long time. I'm still waiting for the Little Mermaid, Disney. Make the Little Mermaid. Oh, well. But make sure you watch it. Disney's classic of Beauty and the Beast on March 17, 2017. And if you want to get it on the day it comes out, make sure you fandango it. Okay? But Let's go. You oh, snap. Did you hear that? That jingle is that so raven. It's the future I can see. That I saw. It's so mysterious to me. That's so raven. Yes. That's so raven is getting a spin-off in 2017. So let's move on from movies to our television shows. So that's so raven is getting a spin-off in 2017. Now you may know Raven Simone as Raven Baxter. Yes, that's Raven Baxter. Um, she plays a psychic teen who gets visions, you know, like a, a psychic. And some people don't even believe in that, but I believe in that. You know, there's also spiritual mediums who get visions and things like that. But she plays a psychic on TV. And, um, and some, some of the things that she sees that's beyond the future is not what it seems to be. So it gets kind of a little bit of messy. But Disney's Raven Simone is going to be playing Ray, uh, Raven Baxter as, not this time as a teen. She's actually going to be a spinoff. So since it's going to be a spinoff, she's going to be playing as a mother of two kids, and one of the kids gets psychic visions. So that's going to be amazing. I cannot wait to see that. Um, Raven Simone was, after she was on That's a Raven for like, eh, probably like four years, um, she moved on to do another syndicated show, which was State of Georgia. And it didn't go anywhere. I guess, like, everybody was so used to her doing Raven Simone and That's So Raven, and it was such a big impact for Disney Channel kids and, and people at home who watched her that it didn't get the life that it was supposed to get. But, oh, well, it's like trial and error. So now she's going to reprise her role, and she's going to be playing, again, the psychic um, diva that's been chiming on on Disney Channel. And after she was doing That's So Raven, she was on The View, and she's been doing The View for such a long time, probably, I guess, like, maybe, like, six or eight months on The View. And a lot of people thought it was a good choice for her to do The View, and some people thought it was not a good choice because they felt like she was not as host-like. But, girl, at least you tried, you know? If you still want to host, you can come to my show. We could talk about Raven and That's So Raven and all the people in the great cast that's going to be on the show. Because I'm going to be watching. I'm excited. But I'm more excited if I could get a role on That's So Raven so that way I could get paid, you know what I'm saying? As a, as a full-time actor, that's what I want to do. So why don't you call me and get me on your show as That's a Raven? Because I could just so pull it off for the comedy. Oh, well. But it's getting get distributed on ABC Family and Disney Channel for the series to be revved up in 2017. Probably in the fall, because I believe they're going to start filming at the end of 2016, early 2017, to have it at the end of the year. So I don't know. We shall see. But it's going to be an amazing spinoff. Well, coming up, we got more stuff to talk about. We have one of my all-time idols, Jennifer Lopez. I know, yes, Jennifer Lopez is working on her second sophomore Spanish album. We'll be right back to talk more about it on Top 5 Picks. This is Vega One. What's going on? Yeah! Don't go just yet. Please make sure to support every Vega411 platform, starting with twitter.com slash Vega411official. We also have our own personal YouTube channel, which is Vega411 slash What's Going On, as well as the Facebook page and Instagram. Please like, subscribe, and share with all your friends. My name is Jesse Vega, and I'll see you guys soon. Welcome back to Vega 411, top five picks, guys. So we just started off, we're talking about Beauty and the Beast and That's a Raven, coming back into 2017 with their new projects. So we're gonna kick it off and start talking about more stuff. One of my idols, now you know very well that when I was gonna talk about some topics on my show, I'm gonna mention her name, Jennifer Lopez. I'm so thirsty, I'm excited. I gotta get a cup of tea. There's no, t why ain't nobody put no tea on my drink uh, mug? Um, hello, I don't pay you. Right, oh, okay. Anyway, you know what? We'll deal with that later. 
before I even begin, can we just say, look at this set. It's amazing. I know I'm giving you waiting for tonight. Anyway, we'll, Jennifer Lopez. Now, I don't know about you, but I love all my Spanish music. Yes, from Celia Cruz to La India to Tito Nieves to Tito Puente to Mark Anthony. I mean, everybody that I love from Spanish is what I grew up in. Uh, but one artist, like I said, Jennifer Lopez, is working on her follow-up Spanish album. Now, it's been 10 years, <clears throat> and I know a lot of people are thinking, like, wow, 10 years. Why it takes her so long to do another Spanish album? Well, I think it's because Jennifer Lopez is a perfection perfectionist. She doesn't like to do anything that is just like, oh, I want to pop out albums, especially Spanish. She wanted to get, she wants it to be right. So that's why she's working with um, a lot of producers. And this Spanish album is going to be her best work yet because her last Spanish album was like pop rock. And a lot of the J lovers were a little bit, they love that she enjoyed doing that type of style from transitioning to her Latin pop divaness and dancing and then try to be a vocal songstress bird to singing a lot of pop rock songs, romantic ballads. So I'm excited because she's working on this follow-up Spanish album that's coming out. Not too sure when, but I'm guessing it's sometime in the spring. But um, Jennifer Lopez is working with one of her dearest friends, as well as she calls her hit her baby daddy, Mark Anthony, who's executive producing her follow-up Spanish album. Um, they just recently released um, this cover called Don't Kill Me. I know you're going to kill me, guys. And you're like, damn, he's a, such a gringo that he doesn't know how to say the damn title right. I think it's called Olvidame y Pega la Vuelta. I don't know. I think that's how I got it right. Don't kill me, though. I'm an invaded New York Bronx reeking from the Bronx. I got my Spanish okay up there. But, yeah, she just released that cover. And it's been number one in eight countries and still number one on U.S. iTunes. Not too sure, but hopefully she can hold it off and get her fifth number one single on the Latin charts. So stay tuned for that because it's going to come out sometime in 2017. I don't know. But I'm excited for Jennifer Lopez to come out with that next Spanish album because... It's, it's amazing, like, hello, aside from Shakira, I mean, I like her, but I really like Jennifer Lopez because she, she's the Latin queen, she's my mother. But aside from music, she's also being TV. You know, she's been doing a lot of things, like TV, acting, she's been doing a lot of stuff. She's also working on her TV hit series, Shades of Blue, which is coming out on NBC again for a second season. And um, Shades of Blue is revolving in the world of the, a family of crooked cops. You know, like, you know, a lot of those crooked cops that come out that's in New York and all those places in, in the world where they do a lot of questionable things. Yeah. Well, she's working on season two on that Shades of Blue. So I'm excited because season one was really good. It was really good. Shades of Blue actually um, was like the most highest rated syndicated cop drama series on NBC, which was mostly was rated on 8.55 million viewers. You, you know what that is? 8.55 million viewers that outbeated a lot of TV shows. Well, it's coming out again, I think in January, hopefully. They haven't released any trailers yet, but we're going to have to see. Um, but make sure you watch that Shades of Blue. It's coming out, and it has Ray Liotta, Jennifer Lopez, Andrea DiMatteo. Um, okay, see, the thing is, when she did Shades of Blue... And she decided to do a TV series. I was thinking, like, she was going to do comedy and something a little bit dramatic, but there's too many cop shows. Why out of all shows she was going to do a cop show? There's so many other shows she could have done, but I guess the character was good for her and the storyline is doing very well. But I would have expected something different, but at least, congratulations, it got picked up for season two because she's been doing a lot of other TV series that didn't get picked up. But I'm happy for her. So make sure you watch Shades of Blue. It's always on NBC. They're still trying to figure out the date. I don't know when, but we'll find out and see. So congratulations to you, Jennifer Lopez, and hopefully the J-Lovers who's been watching this is excited as I am. So let's move on to technology. Yes, we're going to move on to technology. I really need somebody to really refill this. Like, why haven't anybody refilled this? I don't understand, like, why I have a coffee mug and nobody is refilling. Like, I need an assistant. If you need to contact me, like... Pick call. Like, I need an assistant. Why do we feel this? I'm not drinking hot water. Anyway, so technology. So you may be familiar with Apple has been releasing their latest invention, the Apple iPhone, iPhone 7. 
Now, my um, my bestie, he's been um, having his Samsung Galaxy for such a long time that it's driving me crazy that I really want him to get an Apple iPhone. Cause like, I don't understand. It's like kind of like broken on like in the front and it kind of like freezes. Like what kind of crap is that? Like why can't you just buy your own damn iPhone? Everybody's buying it, hello? Did you hear what I'm saying? Buy an Apple iPhone, Mr. Rabasa. Anyway, everybody is buying an iPhone. It's the iPhone 7. Um, the best thing about the iPhone 7, I don't have it with me, but can I get somebody to give me that? Um, can someone give me the, my, my phone? Over, uh, yeah. So the iPhone 7. I got my I got my own iPhone 7, okay? What I like about this iPhone, uh, well, even before I even start talking about the iPhone, let's just give you a little bit of some gnosis about the iPhone 7 and the 7 Plus. Now, the, back in September 2016, Apple announced that it's actually revolutionary, revolutionized is iPhone 7 and iPhone 7 Plus. Now, it's including, uh, it's like a breakthrough moment because like most of the iPhones had like one camera and it's mostly used to like, it was only one camera and if you, if you notice that when you try to take like a selfie, um, when you try to flip it to the side of your face, it doesn't like flash. You know, I always wanted somebody to like create that. Well, the iPhone 7 decided to do that where you flip it and then it has like the flash on it. Um, and it's just an amazing um, techno technology that they decided to do with this item. Like it's bigger, it's thinner, it's bolder, it's juicier. You know, I love my items thick and juicy. But aside from that, it has its own aux wire, you know? People were a little bit upset about that because they thought, why would the iPhone not have an audio jack? You know, like, why did they take that out and have the aux, like, th like this part? I know you're gonna kill me, it's not the aux wire, it's actually like the, the charging part, but it's funny because you charge it and you can hear the headphones, so. Um, but they created that and they took out like the, the audio jack, I don't understand why, but it's a little bit louder. So it's, you, you hear the bass a little bit more, it's, it's more crispy and clean. So, um, and it has a lot of like great stuff. It has, I decided to get like the 125 gigabytes because when I tried to get it at the Tween Mobile store, it was such on back order that I didn't get my phone until like three weeks after because I also got one for my boyfriend too. He got his first because his was like the black, but I heard that the rose gold and the jet black was being on back order. And I know people are having their back order till like December. So, sucks to be you. Oh well, either that you're gonna have to sell it or find a way to get the iPhone 7, but make sure you get it for the holidays, especially on Christmas when you wanna get it for your lover or your mother, your father, whoever you wanna get it for. But it has extra battery life. And the best part about the iPhone 7, 7 Plus is water resistant. So if I decided to put this on water, like I was supposed to get some hot water and tea, maybe it would've, not, it would've worked, but people over here doesn't give me, you know, the time of day of helping me out here. Guess that because I don't have that much budget. Just because I have a studio doesn't mean that I have everybody, like a lot of people with me. Oh well. The great thing about the iPhone is actually water resistant and it's also has extra battery life. So, and dust resistant. So that means like not that much dust can get into the iPhone. Um, one time I was actually with my friend Danny, right? We went out to Long Island and I decided to be so like extra that I decided to dip my phone in the water. I know, you're like, what kind of idiot would do that? Why would you put your phone in water, just dip it just because you was feeling sassy that day? And then to like my astonishment, the phone wasn't working. I couldn't even hear it. Like people were calling me and I couldn't like, I was like, what the hell? So a great way to fix that, you put rice in a bag and the phone and then it sucks up the water and then your phone gets back into like better development. I don't know, but yeah, this time it's water resistant. So, but I'm not gonna try it this time because you know, we try it again, maybe it would never work, and I don't even have insurance, so I know. Isn't that crazy? I don't even got insurance. But yeah, so, um, oh yeah, the creator, I forgot about him. Yeah, the Apple, the creator of Apple, his name, the senior vice president who created the phone, his name is Philip Schriller. Did I get that right, I think? Or Philip Schreimer or Schumer? I don't know. But he's the senior vice president, worldwide well-known. And it's funny because a lot of people say, you know, all these creators like MySpace and Facebook and Apple, um, they got all this money, but their outfits suck. You know, they're wearing jeans, they're not really prim and proper. With all that money, you would think you would be all dialed out. Sneakers and jeans, I don't understand that. Why do they do that? I guess they don't have that many options to wear when they go outside, but if I had all that money, I'd be having bedazzled jewels and suits and 
like custom made shoes. Like this boot is very Italian boot. I like my boots. I love my boots. But anyway, aside from all that, make sure you just purchase an iPhone. That's all I can say. If you can't get the money, then go to a Habibi store. The only problem with the Habibi store is that you're not gonna get your money's back if it fucks up. That's what I'm gonna tell you. You ain't gonna get your money's back. You're just gonna get the phone, get a ticket, and that's it. Just get your iPhone 7 or 7 Plus. If you don't have that much money, then I guess they're gonna have like the, I don't know, like the five, this, they had like this five, five E or five whatever, I don't know, for the cheaper people. But just get it, get it for the holidays, all right? So, I guess that's all for today for the show that we have for Top 5 Picks. I'm excited. This is going to be a new era, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to have Vega Phone 1 Season 6 in this studio. We're going to have a lot of guest appearances. Um, we're going to have some talent. We're also going to have some topics that is happening in our pop culture world. And we're just going to have a lot of fun. So make sure before we even decide to chime out and say bye, make sure you subscribe, like, and Follow me on all the social sites, which is facebook.com slash Vega411, and also on Twitter, which is twitter.com slash Vega411official. And we also have a YouTube channel, which is Vega411, what's going on? I'm excited to be here. This is so exciting. I cannot wait to see how many people are gonna come into the show so I can interview and talk about a lot of great things and a lot of topics. We are gonna get crazy, you know? It's gonna be that type of show. We're gonna get, we're gonna go talk about some sensitive topics and some aggressive topics and a lot of great things. I cannot wait. So make sure you show support and subscribe. I'm your host, Jesse Vega, and I'm excited to be here with you guys. And this is Vega 411, what's going on? What's this? You figure it out. glass I see a reflection in the past not being what I want to be but being what you want to see now I can see it clearer I feel it nearer it's all about me And the pain Going through the darkness and the rain Equality and unity A better life for you and me Now sing! Now I can see it clearer I feel it nearer It's all about me You don't have claims on me Your hate don't own me I'm gonna show you I'm gonna 
I don't pay you to sleep. I quit. You can't quit. I'll show you. 